What's the bit about penguins? Today we do 2015 number seven on synaptic signaling and gene expression. I do want to remind you that the nervous system is no longer in the curriculum. And this question is from 2015. Um, so some of the stuff I might mention in the prompt um, might no longer be in scope, but the signaling component of it and the gene expression component of it are all fair game. So small receptors in mammals involve interaction of airborne odorant molecules from the environment with receptor proteins on olfactory neurons in the nasal cavity. The binding of odorant molecules to receptor proteins trigger action potentials in the olfactory neurons and results in transmission of information to the brain. Mammal mammalian genomes typically have approximately 1,000 functional odorant receptors of genes, each encoding a unique odorant receptor. So describe how the signal is transmitted across the synapse from an activated sensory neuron to the inner neuron that transmits the information to the brain. So this is just asking us how does information travel from one neuron to another neuron? Um, and so it's going to go across the synapse. And this is just by exocytosis. So there's a neurotransmitter. There's a signal that is released from one cell and that binds to the receptor on the other cell. So neurotransmitters are released from the olfactory neuron and they bind to receptors in the postsynaptic neuron. Again, if you were to see this on the exam, there's probably going to be a little bit more information about it that would allow you to be able to make that connection that the neurotransmitters are what's being released. <clears throat> so student says when an action potential reaches the synapse, it triggers an opening of gated calcium channels and calcium flows into the synapse. Influx of calcium stimulates the formation of vesicles around neurotransmitters to perform exocytosis and release neurotransmitters in the synapse. These neurotransmitters from the sensory neuron then bind to the receptors of sodium channels of the dendrites of the interneuron. This depolarizes the postsynaptic neuron membrane because sodium rushes in, which leads to the formation of an action potential in the interneuron so it can transmit the information to the brain. Again, this is a little bit out of scope, just knowing about the transmitters being released um, and binding to the receptor on the opposite cell is really where you need to kind of focus. So part B says explain how the expression of a limited number of odorant receptor genes can lead to the perception of thousands of odors. Use the evidence about the number of odorant receptor genes to support your answer. So there's a thousand genes, but yet we're able to have thousands of odors. And so it comes to how are you able to change, like for the DNA to be modified that allow you to get different proteins from the same DNA strand. It all comes down to alternative splicing. Okay? So you can have alternative splicing that allows for you to um, cut out different introns, introns and exons that will allow for a different mRNA to be made from the same DNA. Um, so multiple receptors can be produced from that gene. Also, you can kind of think about that if molecules are similar sizes and similar binding to them, they could bind to the same receptor. So one odorant receptor can bind to more than one molecule. Um, and then knowing about the central nervous system probably is not even really in scope anymore. Um, so a small number of genes can lead to the perception of thousands of odors um, through alternative splicing during post-transcriptional modification. Um, once a pre-mRNA transcript is transcribed, a splicetome removes non-coding introns and splices together the remaining exons, but they can be put together in multiple combinations to be made in different odor-receiving proteins. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, AP Bio Penguins address success. Bye, y'all.